Ever look up and think, why is the moon ghosting me some nights and flexing on others? Here's the quick, satisfying answer you'll never forget. The moon doesn't make its own light. The sun does the heavy lifting. As the moon orbits Earth, we see different slices of its sunlit side. That's it. Start at the new moon. The moon's between Earth and the sun, so the bright side faces away from me, basically invisible against the daytime glare. Slide a little in its orbit and boom. A thin crescent. I'm catching just a sliver of sunlight. Keep going, and I hit first quarter. Looks half lit because I'm seeing half of the sunlit half. That sounds weird, but picture a spotlight on a ball. I'm just viewing it from the side. Next up, waxing gibbous. More than half lit, not quite full. Then, full moon. Earth's between the sun and the moon, so the entire sunlit face points at me like a giant space flashlight. After that, it all runs in reverse. Waning gibbous. Third quarter. Waning crescent. Back to new. One more mind bender. The moon keeps the same face toward me. It spins once on its axis in about the same time it orbits Earth. That synchronous rotation means it's not frozen. It's just locked in step. Special events? Let's turbo through them. A supermoon happens when a full moon lines up with the moon's closest point to Earth. Same moon, closer orbit spot, so it looks a bit bigger and brighter. A red moon is a lunar eclipse. Earth slides between the sun and the full moon, and our atmosphere bends red sunlight onto it, like every sunrise and sunset on Earth painted across the moon at once. That's why it glows coppery. A blue moon isn't about color. It's the second full moon in one calendar month. Rare? Yeah. Magical? Also, yeah. So if the moon looks half, slim, full, or gone, it's just geometry, sunlight, and timing. Learn the rhythm, and you can predict the whole show from your backyard. Next clear night, look up and flex your new moon IQ.